The start of the movie is quite peculiar. Two officers, Parker Barnes and John Donovan, both in uniform, exit a subway train. Outside, all the people are wearing the same gray suits. Then suddenly, they start running and go above ground into a restaurant. During this scene, we are shown how the people appear to be some sort of simulation. They can walk into each other and utter the same words. Even the world itself seems to be a simulation. The two are tracking down a criminal named Sid 6.7 at a restaurant in virtual reality. Sid is short for sadistic intelligent dangerous. They find him and a fight breaks out with a lot of shooting. Donovan gets electrocuted by Sid and Parker is about to die himself but suddenly Donovan and Parker both vanish into thin air. Then we are shown that they are both in a kind of VR chair, shaking vigorously. They are taken out but Donovan loses his life. It is told that the machine was being tested for a virtual reality system that is going to be used for training police officers, but it doesn't seem to be working. As test subjects they are using convicts, Parker and Donovan. Parker then tells his friend Billy, who is the chief of the police, that the Sid is cheated, as electrocution wasn't a part of his method. The director overseeing the project orders the programmer in charge of creating Sid, Dr. Daryl Lyndon Meyer, to shut down the project. Parker is a former police officer in prison for taking down political criminal Matthew Grimes, who took away Parker's wife and daughter. Parker took out Grimes, but also accidentally shot two news reporters in the process. This led to him becoming a convicted and serving 17 years to life. Parker is taken back to prison where obviously everyone hates him. Since he used to be a cop, he gets in a fight with a fellow inmate, then gets beaten up by the police and thrown in his cell. We are also shown he has a fake artificial limb for an arm. Back at the research facility, Dr. Lindenmeyer is talking to Sid on the screen. It seems he has real AI and consciousness. He accuses the Sid of increasing the neural calibration resulting in Donovan's death and tells him he is going to be shut down. To which Sid says, I will never be shut down with a rather creepy smile that sends chills down his spine. Parker has a meeting with a consultant Madison Carter for a reduced sentence. Madison is a renowned criminal psychologist working on a book. Back at the research facility, Lyndon Meyer, along with Sid has devised a secret plan. He talks to Clyde, a fellow worker, who has been using new nanobot technology called nanotech synthetic organism that can generate anything from the digital world. Based on their modules, the created creatures can further regenerate themselves from glass and as long as the module is inside them, they will live on. Clyde fancies Sheila 3.2, Sheila being another AI in the facility. Lyndon Meyer tricks him by telling him to bring Sheila to life for his own pleasure but replacing Sheila's module with Sid 3.7s. Clyde shows Lyndon Meyer the new technology, an AI snake that has been brought to life. Clyde furthers cuts the snake in half but then brings it near glass. The snake quickly uses the silicon molecules to heal itself completely. Clyde informs Lyndon Meyer that the snake will continue to heal itself and be immortal as long as it has glass nearby. The only way one can destroy it is to get rid of its module from its head, which he does. Soon, Sid hatches himself out of an egg of nanotech and takes out Clyde instantly. Lyndon Meyer, seeing the madness of his creation runs away and disappears. Sid escapes the facility. Parker, being one of the best cops and knowing how Sid thinks, is brought out to find Sid and terminate him. He will be given a pardon if he accomplishes it. He gets infused with a tracker in his body, which also contains a neural toxin in case he tries to escape. Madison blackmails the cops to let her go on the mission with Parker, otherwise she'd tell the public about the incident. Parker is clearly not happy with the idea but must abide by it. Together they leave off to catch Sid. Meanwhile, Sid has started his streak of murders by starting with a couple. He sprawls red liquid all over the walls, copying the famous criminal Charles Mann and appears to have also armed himself with the guard's gun. Parker and Madison arrive at the scene to find no evidence left behind. Dr. Lindenmeyer is scared to death and has hidden himself in a motel room. Parker and Madison head off to Lindenmeyer's office to find any clue of where Sid may be. They search through his laptop and find that Sid is made up of more than 200 personalities. Lindenmeyer had to create him and build him up, and all the personalities rage inside of Sid. Matthew Grimes, the person who destroyed Parker's family is a part of those 200, giving Parker the motivation to end him. Madison goes home to meet her daughter Karen, while Parker waits in the car to get information about any sort of attack on the city through the radio. All the while Sid is having the time of his life at a nightclub bullying people, and using their screams to create a whole orchestra. Parker drives off to the crime scene with Madison. The police arrive at the club first where Sid is vibing to the beat of the screams. He easily deals with the police and gets back to his business, forcing the hostages to scream louder and being lost in bliss. Parker arrives in the club and even though he shoots about 20 bullets in Sid, it has no effect, but does seem to weaken Sid. Sid escapes the club and hijacks a police car. Parker lashes himself on but is pulled off. Madison arrives with her car, picks Parker up, and the chase begins, during which Sid talks to them on the radio taunting Parker. They arrive at the bridge where Sid happily jumps off the bridge and escapes, despite Parker shooting him again. 
Parker has utmost belief that Matthew Grimes is the dominant personality in Sid, as he was taunting him just like he used to. He warns them that Sid will try to attack areas with lots of people and huge media coverage, just for the attention. Even though this kind of behavior was not part of Sid's programming, he seems to be evolving. Sid makes his way to a street market where he takes out another victim and watches on a TV that an ultimate fight championship is being conducted in an Olympic stadium nearby. As targeting public places is his favorite, he makes his way over there. He starts off by harassing a girl and takes out her boyfriend by throwing him all the way down the stadium using brute force. A guard shoots his hand off with a shotgun but he pays it no heed and directly jumps into the ring. Parker gets to the stadium as well through a clue in a video that Sid filmed at the market. As soon as Sid spots Parker, he starts running and escapes the stadium. Sid gets on a train and takes a woman hostage. He has a gun pointed at her and warns Parker to not shoot or chase him, reminding him that this isn't a video game. Parker still shoots and Sid takes out the woman, throwing her off the train. The train leaves with Sid and a kid waving goodbye at Parker creepily. As a result of the woman's death, Parker is the one who is accused of the murder. Even though 50 people had seen it happen, they witnessed Parker shooting the woman. Parker, despite pleading to his friend Billy, is sent away on a police vehicle. Along the way, Parker gets flashbacks of his past and we are told of his story. Matthew Grimes was a political criminal. Parker being a cop was in charge of catching him and was very close to doing it. To stop Parker's manhunt, Grimes kidnaps his wife and daughter and keeps them locked in a room with a ticking time bomb. As Grimes is being interviewed by two reporters that were brought in, Parker also finds his family and tries to rescue them. But as soon as he opens the door to free them, a laser detection sensor causes the alarm to go off destroying them. Parker doesn't die and gets his revenge by destroying Grimes and his associates. Fueled by rage and fury, he does not think straight and suddenly turns around and shoots the reporters as well when they make a sound behind him, mistaking it for danger. In the present world, the police truck stops after the drive drivers are liquidated and Sid enters it. He tells Parker how Grimes oozes to the surface as soon as he sees Parker's face. He frees Parker and escapes, trying to frame him for the murder of the guards, and also discloses that the tracker in Parker contains a toxin which could be released via satellite. He is messing with Parker's head and enjoying it. Parker calls Madison and tells her he didn't eliminate the guards. Parker further reveals that Sid just likes to mess with his favorite opponent, Parker. She asks him where he is, to which he replies I'm with my family and hangs up the phone. He goes to their graveyard and awaits certain death by the poison release. Madison calls Billy, informs him about the neural toxin and that the officials are about to release it. Billy storms in the room and breaks all of the system apart preventing the release. Madison leaves her house to find Parker. As she leaves in her car, Sid appears in a van dressed as a worker outside her house. Madison encounters Parker who tells her that Sid's appetite is only going to grow larger, and he is going to need a bigger audience. Havoc and chaos is created across the country with people calling for closing of borders to prevent the wrong accused Parker from escaping the USA. During this chaos, Sid takes control of a broadcast office and starts his own death TV. Parker and Madison rush to stop him but Madison sees her own daughter on the TV who has been kidnapped by Sid. Parker promises to rescue Karen and tells Madison to find the owner of the office and turn off all the telephone lines and broadcast. She does exactly that, but also finds Dr. Leiden Mayer and captures him at gunpoint. The SWAT teams arrives, finds Parker and starts shooting at him instead. He runs into the elevator up to the 38th floor, where the studio is, all the while Sid talks to the viewers. But as soon as the telephone lines are cut off, he goes mad. He just loves the attention. Parker arrives and shoots at Sid. A fight breaks out with Sid running and laughing hysterically. He shoots back at Parker but it does not seem like he even wants to eliminate him. Billy calls off the police helicopter shooting at them. He wants Parker to handle Sid. Yet again, Parker empties his gun on Sid but to no avail. They both are on the very top of the building going in on a full action-packed fight. Sid raises Parker to throw him off the building but a rope swung by Parker brings them both down a floor through the side window. Parker is unhurt but Sid has hundreds of glass shards driven into his body. He is gurgling for air. As Parker gets closer and asks him where Karen is, Sid starts absorbing the silicon molecules in the glass and regenerating himself. He can never be destroyed if he module is still inside of him. Parker digs a hand into the back of Sid's hand and takes out his module, ending him. But Madison appears with Leed and Mayer at gunpoint and they all realize there is no way to find Karen without Sid. There is a huge shift in the events of the movie. We are taken back to the rooftop, but this time when Sid lifts up Parker, he actually throws him down all the stories. His body falls down and the red liquid flows out but Parker doesn't die and the red liquid seeps back out. We are shown that Parker and Madison are in the VR now, without Sid knowing it. They want to extract the information from him about Karen's location. Lee Den Mayer is controlling the VR and seems to be helping them with Billy overlooking him. In the VR, on top of the rooftop, Sid is talking with Madison who is constantly pleading him and asking for Karen's location. He suddenly knocks one of the huge roof exhaust fan cylinders and tells her Karen had been here all along. Suddenly Parker appears, unhurt and undead. That is when Sid realizes he is back in the VR. 
Billy tells Lita and Mayer to get them both out of it. He gets Madison out, but then suddenly attacks Billy and eliminates him. He increases the neural sensitivity drastically and is planning on melting Parker's brains. Madison however fights Lita and Mayer, grabs a gun and eliminates him. She then releases Parker and together they go to rescue Karen. As Madison tries to open the hatch, Parker knowing better stops her and tells her it is probably booby-trapped. He enters from the top by stopping the fan with his fake limb and finds pressure plates, lasers and all kinds of shenanigans that Sid had pulled off. He also leaves a small display screen which tells Parker that his end is near and whenever Parker tries to stop the bomb, Sid comes mocking him. Parker uses a wire from his fake limb and is finally able to stop the bomb. The end causes some serious anxiety because the timer keeps keeps going down and Parker thinks he has failed. Luckily, he was able to loop the timer. The movie ends with Madison reunited with her daughter and Parker standing on top of the building, throwing Sid's module down, which shatters to pieces. <laughs>